Hi gang, Rob here. It is the afternoon of 25 August 2022 coming to you today on a mostly cloudy but thin clouds afternoon in Northeast Indiana, 76 degrees. You know, we're, we're just barely a month, a little over a month away from my favorite movie season of the year. And it's kind of my favorite one. It's the movie season I look forward to more than any other. It happens the entire month of October in our household. Yeah, because there's a lot of movies to watch leading up to Halloween. It's just a fun time for us. We love the scary movie in my house. So today, in honor of the rapidly approaching scary movie season, we're doing a top 10 list of the top 10 scariest movies of all time. Now, this is my list. It comes from my almost 57 years of existence on Earth and loving scary movies for, let's just say, close to 50 of those. So I've seen a lot of good scary movies that were made in my lifetime. A couple of them before my lifetime that were very, very scary. And these are my top 10. And you're going to notice a very dense distribution in the late 70s. My early teen years. I, th I think there are two factors that go into that. Number one, those are kind of the years where our minds are forming. So things we learn in those days stick with us. And also I think there were some extremely great scary movies made in the late 70s. So here's my list. <coughs> this is the best I can do of after years of consideration. And granted, this is totally subjective. These are my top 10 scariest movies of all time. I have some criteria. I'm getting a little more organized in my top 10 list formulation. Number one, the film leaves a lasting frightful memory either in our everyday lives or in subsequent viewings of the film over and over again, or both. Number two, two, the villain, for lack of a better term, has a power or powers which make him or her seem, him, her, or it <coughs> seem invincible to the protagonist and the audience. We must perceive the villain as evil or malicious. Can't be a good guy. Number three, we must share the terror felt by the protagonist or other characters in a real way. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to read them from 10 to 1, and then we'll throw some honorable mentions into the mix. Number 10, scariest movie of all time. Friday the 13th, the original, 1980 slasher film directed by Sean Cunningham starring Betsy Palmer not as Jason but she was the villain <coughs> Mrs. Voorhees <coughs> Kevin Bacon is the other notable actor in Friday the 13th nobody else did we remember nobody and because the killer is a mystery for most of the film, we don't know where the, the fright is coming from. Certainly, there was an air of invincibility, even when it was a little old lady. Number nine, from 1979, starring Sigourney Weaver, Tom Skerritt, Harry Dean Stanton, we have our it category of villain. The movie Alien, directed by Ridley Scott. What's that moment? The moment in Alien that gives us a lasting, frightful memory. <clears throat> Every time I watch it, the alien coming out of the, uh, the torso gets me every time. Number eight, one of our more modern scary movies. Because guys, let's face it, we forgot how to make scary movies after about 1980. Until 1996, Wes Craven directed it. There have been many subsequent films. 
but the original Scream, 1996. A movie that poked fun at and paid tribute to its own genre. But after all the clowning subsides, you're left with an extremely scary movie. Because in this case, we have no idea who the killer is. We have no idea who the villain is. A lot of people thought it was Cotton Weary, played masterfully by Lev Schreiber. But it wasn't. In fact, there were two. The moment that leaves the lasting memory, I gotta say, is Rose McGowan in the garage door. And Rose never looked better than she did. Trapped in the doggy door, if you know what I mean. Anyway, great film, great cast, great director. <clears throat> Next, at seven, we're going back to 1954. The Alfred Hitchcock directed Rear Window, starring James Stewart. My favorite Jimmy Stewart movie, by the way. Not generally a Jimmy fan. He was perfect in that movie. And the most stunning leading lady ever to grace the silver screen, Grace Kelly. Super suspenseful, beautifully directed, well shot, perfectly acted. And the threat of death is real. The moment that leaves the lasting memory <coughs> is when Mr. Stewart is in the apartment of the suspect. And unbeknownst to him, the suspect enters and Grace witnesses it from the other side of the courtyard. It's spellbinding. Look at this. 1976 is the number six scariest movie of all time. The Omen, starring, starring Gregory Peck as Robert Thorne, Lee Remick as his wife Catherine, Harvey Spencer as Damien. It's The Omen. And this is where we have, see we have human villains on the list, we have alien villains on the list, and we have supernatural and such a well-written movie directed by Richard Donner by the way this takes fright it takes terror to a level that is real but not of earth unlike alien this is a real evil force that we have to contend with Damien Thorne spawn of Satan it's it's a parallel it's a parallel storyline between God the Father and Jesus the Son obviously at the end <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to tell you then you need to go back and watch it super scary movie people die Satan kills them through Damien powers are supernatural brilliant movie Number five, Hitchcock again, The Birds, 1963, starring Tippi Hedren, mother of Melanie Griffith, who was terrorized by Hitchcock <clears throat> during the making of the film. Her, <laughs> her terror was real. Rod Taylor and a cool, a very cool, funky, Whimsical supporting role played by Suzanne Plachette. So the villain are birds. And they're not birds that one at a time would pose any threat. But oh, the threat they pose to Tippy and Rod Taylor. It's terrorizing. It's t absolutely terrorizing. It has the one ingredient. Tell me, guys, when you see a hugely dense population of black birds on a lawn, in a field, on utility wires, tell me it doesn't bring back the birds in your mind. That's number five. <clears throat> number four, Cape Fear, 
1962, the original. <clears throat> Gregory Peck, Robert Mitchum, Polly Bergen, directed by, directed by, I don't know. I wrote down the wrong name. Anyhow, an unbelievable movie. Robert Mitchum plays the villain Max Cady, terrorizes the family of <clears throat> the defense lawyer that might have, but probably not, sabotaged his own case that sent Robert Mitchum, Max Cady, to jail. When he gets out, he cleverly, methodically, unprosecutably terrorizes the family. And by the way, it is scarier than the 1991 Cape Fear with uh, Nick Nolte and Robert De Niro in the two main roles. Number three, scariest movie of all time, directed by John Carpenter, starring Jamie Lee Curtis, Donald Pleasance, and PJ Souls as Totally Linda. Halloween, guys, Halloween. The namesake of the holiday that drives the scary movie season. It's brilliantly made. It's perfectly directed. It's a great story. <clears throat> what is the, what is that one moment, the frightful memory? For me, it's Jamie Lee in the closet with the knife coming through the closet doors. Mm. Number two, scariest movie of all time, 1980, Stanley Kubrick, A Winter Lodge in the Rockies, an author, <coughs> played by Jack Nicholson, goes crazy, tries to kill his family, just like he's been doing for a hundred years. What? Two moments in this one that provide a lasting, frightful memory. First, it's Jack Torrance hacking through the bathroom door where his wife, Wendy, played by Shelley Duvall, is hiding from him. And I believe he says when his face gets through the door, here's Johnny. And then there's the ax to Scatman Crothers in the kitchen. Brilliant film. Directed and, and shot as only Kubrick could do it. Superb movie. Before I get to number one, let's do the honorable mentions. In no particular order, from the year 2000, American Psycho. This movie was an incubator for a generation of actors. Starred Christian Bale. Willem Dafoe was the old guy. Jared Leto, Justin Thoreau, Josh Lucas, and Reese Witherspoon. Who directed it? I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, 1992, starring Gary Oldman as the Count, Winona Ryder, and Keanu Reeves with Anthony Hopkins in a supporting role. Next, from back in the 70s, honorable, uh, honorable mention goes to The Exorcist. The Exorcist, starring Linda Blair, Ellen Burstyn, Max von Sydow, and again, Martin Balsam, he's everywhere. Also, honorable mention goes to Cape Fear, 1991, Nolte, De Niro, Jessica Lange as Catherine, Juliet Lewis as Danielle. A cameo by Gregory Peck and Robert Mitchum, directed by Martin Scorsese. And the last on the honorable mention list is Psycho from 1960, another Hitchcock film. Frankly, it's not that scary, but it sucks you in. It, it takes your mind to a place it doesn't want to go. Brilliantly acted lead role by Anthony Perkins with Janet Lee and Vera Miles as the sisters and Martin Balsam. He's everywhere. Of course, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. And that brings us... <clears throat> 
to the number one scariest movie of all time. It is not a movie we think of as part of the scary movie season. In fact, it's probably a summer season movie, but it's the scariest movie of all time. Hands down, bar none. Released in 1975, based on a book by Peter Benchley, directed by Steven Spielberg, starring Roy Scheider, Richard Dreyfuss, Robert Shaw, and Lorraine Gary, with a brilliant character role by Murray Hamilton as Mayor Larry. Let's see. What's the name of that? It's Jaws. Of course it's Jaws. Of course it's Jaws. Why is it Jaws? Because of criterion number one. It leaves a lasting, frightful memory either in our lives or in subsequent viewings or both. And it's number one in both. Who, who can tell me, let's, let's say over 45, who knows Jaws? Who can tell me <clears throat> that you've ever waded into the ocean without thinking about that shark? I've never met anybody that has, that's walked into the ocean and, had, and not thought about that shark. shark. <clears throat> What was my moment in Jaws? Well, the one that still gets me <clears throat> in every viewing is the face popping into the hole in the hull of the boat as Hooper is diving, makes him drop the shark tooth. That's my moment. What about the villain, Bruce the shark? Yes, we perceived him as invincible. We certainly perceived him as evil and malicious because he didn't act like normal sharks. He was on a mission. Did we feel the terror? Did we share the terror? Felt like the protagonists or other characters? Uh, you bet we did because we still think about it. We still think about it. So that about does it, guys. That's it for my list. What about yours? What did I miss? <clears throat> Who did I put on there that didn't belong? I always love the comments in the top 10 list movies, top 10 list videos. I believe that's it for this one. Grace to you and peace, my friends, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, scary movies are fun, and the word is sharp. I'll talk to you soon.